Well, hello everyone. I want to give you a very brief tutorial of my Climacritic software. It would take hours to actually explain all of this, but I'll give you some basics so you can become your own amateur meteorologist, for example. I've had hedge funds use this, um, food companies, coffee, cocoa producers, uh, farmers in Australia that, are, that produce cotton. So basically you have um, a section here called weather variables. And if you click on this to the right, you can see temperature, precipitation, hurricane, historical hurricane information, 500 millibar. What is that? That's where the dome is. That's where the polar vortex is, for example. So let's just look at, uh, at temperature because some of you want to trade natural gas. Okay, click on temperature. Um, this, by the way, is last month of June of 2020, the global temperature pattern here. Um, we can change that uh, to rainfall. And up will come actually the rainfall for the month of June. Here on the left, you can go back to any year. So if you're interested in a in the great drought of 2012, uh, you click on 2012 over here on the left, for example. Uh, here's the month, any month that you want. Let's look at July of 2012, the last time that corn and soybean prices exploded on Midwestern concerns. You can see the below normal rainfall, three inches below normal in Iowa and the Western Corn Belt. And the temperatures go back up here. And you will see the big dome, the big heat dome in 2012. So basically, you can look at any analog year. Um, you can go up here, for example, and look at snow cover. Um, let's see where that is. There we go. Snow cover. Okay. So how about the severe winter of 89 when it froze in Florida? And uh, before the natural gas market actually was around. So here's 1989. All right. See that? <clears throat> Here's the month. Let's look at December 89, for example. This is now snow cover, snow depth. That's the snow cover across the globe in December 89. See that blue area over the upper Midwest? That relates down here to above normal snowfall. So you can basically play with this and look at all sorts of historical information. Um, so many of you have heard about the possibility of an El Nino this year, right? It's actually very weak right now. I'm not sure it's going to develop completely, but you can see presently here's on the left, <clears throat> June of 2020, last month. These are the teleconnections. A teleconnection is a variable such as El Nino, sea ice, um, weather climatic features, sometimes thousands of miles away that could affect global climate. Without getting too specific right now, and I can teach you more about this in the future, you can see that Nino 1.2 is minus about a half a degree. Now that's located just near Peru. The ocean temperatures near Peru are slightly below normal. A weak, weak La Nina at the most. So let's say that continues to be the case for the next few months. Okay, let's click on this. You natural gas traders will be interested in this. You look, click on this and up comes a map. <clears throat> so let's uh, look, for example, go over here to December, and we know that Nina 1.2 is negative. Okay, what usually happens during that time? You see the cold polar vortex then tends to move south in December, all right? Obviously, that would stabilize natural gas prices this fall or winter if that was to happen. Still a lot of questions, though, and other factors could influence the climate, not just La Nina. Um, but you can play around with this, and, and, and uh, I'll explain more to you in the future. If you're interested, you can always email me. Thank you.